18 minutes. We got time to add another concept. Uh, that was a little bit faster than I expected. Let us add another playable character. That might be kind of cool. Might take a while, don't get me wrong. But um, let us add a new frame. Where is that? Oh, you do that up here. New frame. Goes to the bottom. We don't want it at the bottom. We want it at the top. Rename. Character selection. You win. We're going to change it to choose. Choose your character. Make it a little bit longer. There we go. Don't need to press any key. Let's go back to the game frame. There's the only guy ever. I'm going to copy that frame. And the reason I'm copying a frame is because instead of like the character, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing. I am inserting an active object. Pasting the frame in there, nuking that frame. This way I don't have all the elements that I've added into the only guy ever object. You'll see if I run the frame, I can't do anything with him, he's just a dude. Because I'm having him as an icon, we're going to have a new playable character. Create, oh whoops, insert. Oh, what buffer do I even want to use? Let's go with... Going with Corvette for this amazing looking car right here. You can all tell that this is Corvette, right? Um, make his tires black. Make him bigger. There we go. And we're going to rename it Corvette. And so what we want to do, go to control E and we want when the player, upon pressing a key, no, we want mouse, user clicks on an object. User clicks on the only guy ever. We're going to set that so that when you play the game, you will play as the only guy ever. And so we're going to need a corresponding user clicks on an object. 1970 Corvette. I'm not going to go add the code in right now, but I think you kind of understand what I'm doing here. I want the character select scene to work, but we're going to need one more. Object. Uh, now let's insert a string. Call it play. And watch it, Watch this. I don't... Okay, so you're allowed to do this. I do not like having strings you need to click on. I also don't like having counters you need to click on. Both of them behave, behave a little fuzzy, so I usually will turn a... Well, let's, let's make it look correct first. We are going to go here, control A. We're going to change it to TF2 secondary, so it looks pretty. We're going to make it bold. Uh, we're going to make it bigger. And we are going to make it spuff green. That looks better. Uh, let's make our background correct. Let's go into the frames values. Is that the right? Is that the right uh, darkness? Eh, close enough. And we're going to go to this play button. And we're going to create active object. And now it wants to know the background image. We want this shade of gray. Uh, and rather than trying to guess it, you can just click the select here and look at how it will highlight whatever color you're currently jamming on about. We're going to pick that gray color. We're going to knock it out of the park. So this, look, it's called Active 2, whereas this is called String 2. So we'll leave the string over there in case we ever need to generate new active objects from it. Uh, but let's rename Active 2 Play Button. And the Play Button is going to be the one that jumps us over to the next screen. So new condition, the mouse... Uh, user clicks on an object, 
play button. When you click on the play button, remember this is storyboard. This is how you change what uh, frame you're on. We are going to jump to frame, game frame. Now, one thing that you'll notice I could have done, next frame and previous frame. If I put in next frame, the same thing would happen. I would go from the character select frame to the game frame. However, I personally exclusively use jump to frame just to, be, just to be safe in case I ever need to shuffle frames around or if I think, oh, you know, I want to have a cutscene where after the character select screen there's a frame where the only guy ever talks about why he's trapped in this labyrinth. Oh, so I'm going to just add a frame here. And then, like, you know, next frame, jump to frame. So there are, there are reasons to have next frame and previous frame. But I like to keep it jump to frame just so I know exactly what's happening. That's just me. Uh, so we now have, when you click on the play button, you can jump to the next frame. Play. And there we go. Oh, I'm at one hit point. Ah, oh, i at three hit points. Thank you, Warlock. So we're going to close that back down. Uh, because you'll notice that when we click the play button, it auto-defaults to the only guy ever. He is our first playable character. Oh, you know, here's something that we're going to do right now. New animation selected. Uh, and so what I'm doing right now, this will make a little bit more sense in a second, but I'm basically adding a way that you can tell which playable character you currently have uh, selected, and we're going to do that by making them have a yellow outline, which you can't see right now because it's not the right animation. We're going to add one for Corvette. Copy. Do you notice how I'm adding a new animation? Selected. Do you want to delete this frame? Yes. Adios. There we go. Oh, you know what? You know what? I forgot something. Let's go to selected. Loop. If you don't, ha if you don't set it to loop, that single frame will cycle and it'll go right back to stopped. We want selected to loop. And before... Hmm. Okay. So, let's go to E. Uh, the control E frame, which is how I got here. User clicks with left button on the only guy ever. Um, then we want to change animation sequence to selected. And we want, when the user clicks left button on Corvette, we also want to change animation sequence to selected. Now, this, you know, right now means that if we clicked them both, they would both be selected. So let also make it so that if you click on the only guy ever, then the Corvette will change to stopped. And likewise, if you click on Corvette, then the only guy ever will change to stopped. Let's see, change to stop, change to selected, change to selected, change to stop. Let's see what that looks like. All right, looking pretty good. We can now switch between our two icons. Uh, that doesn't mean that much right now, uh, but we are going to fix that. So the way that we're gonna fix that is, um, oh, right, okay. So we're going to want a global object for this one. And a global object is an object that stays active no matter what frame we're currently on. And so how do you do that? We're going to do that by... Oh, no. We don't, we don't want to mess with these guys at all. We want to go up to here. What did I do? Oh, I just hit Control-W. Oops. I don't even know what that does. But uh, apparently Control-W toggles visibility of toolbars. That's good to know. User clicks with left button on the only guy ever. Then we're going to change a global value. Let's set, you know, before we do this, new condition, where's start of frame? Start of frame, as you can see, is in the storyboard controls. At the start of the frame, we're going to change global value A to zero. Global value A is going to control what player character we are. So at the start of the frame, set global value A to zero, uh, zero is going to be the only guy ever. If global value A is at zero, then we are playing as the only guy ever, which means at the beginning of the game, uh, you are going to control the only guy ever. So let us also set global value A to zero if you click on the only guy ever. If you click on Corvette, then we are going to change, set the global value A to one. Set global value A to one. Uh, so that means that at the beginning of the frame, and you know what? At the start of the frame, we also want the only guy ever to be selected. So let's see what it looks like now. At the start of the game, 
There's the only guy ever. He's selected. We can t- we can switch over to Corvette if we want to. And back to the only guy ever. And back to Corvette. And back to the only guy ever. And that looks good. So now we need to actually put Corvette into the game. Because we have not currently done so. Um, go in. Copy this frame. All right, looking good. So let us go back to our game frame. Here we are. So this is going to take a little bit of work, obviously. We have a whole bunch of stuff bound to the only guy ever. Um, There are two different ways we could go about this. We could make it so that rather than being the only guy ever, this is the player. And then we could change the player's values based on whether they become... Mr. Corvette. I'm trying to decide if that's what we want to do. Because otherwise, we are going to have to duplicate a lot of code. If we can keep the player character to be the same person, we could avoid doing all that. Um, Let's say we just started this project and we knew all this. If we just started this project, what we could have done, instead of all this nonsense tied to the player, we could have instead tied it to group players, which is a group uh, in the options. There's the only guy ever. Qualifiers, not whatever I said. Uh, there we go. See, qualifier player. So we could have we could have made Corvette and the only guy ever part of qualifier player. Then it would have been a lot easier to add Corvette. And if this was like a game where we were adding a whole bunch of new player characters, if we were playing on having like 12 player characters with downloadable content playable characters, that's what you would want to do. Uh, I don't plan on adding any new, more playable characters, so we can probably cheat this. Uh, but, you know, let's let's not cut corners. Let's do it correctly. Let's insert a new object. It's an active object. I'm going to give it a new frame. I'm going to nuke that frame. And we are going to have another direction where Corvette is facing the other way. Not that it's super visible, but, um, you know... Want the player to be able to notice when the player is moving around. And let's see. Let us also make him platform based. What did we set for the only guy ever? Uh, Not much, except we changed his gravity. So the only guy ever moves at an average speed and he's got a lot of gravity. Let's make Corvette move faster but has less gravity. See what that looks like. Um, Let's just make it so he jumps the same way. This is gonna be a little, this is gonna be a little weird. Let's see what happens. Oh, right, okay. So nothing, haven't actually added any functionality here. So yeah, so nothing actually works on Corvette yet, but you could see that he could drive around, and we are going to have to actually add a lot of stuff before we're going to very efficiently fix that. Qualifier 0, qualifier 0, qualifier 0, qualifier 0. All right, well, that'll be easy enough. Let us go in here and set it so that when Corvette collides with another object, um, specifically group 0, if Corvette collides with group 0, movement, then Corvette will bounce, and let's also fix his uh, leaving the frame. Remember, we go to test position of, oh, is his name active? We should fix that. There we go. If Corvette leaves the frame, he bounces. Where are you, Corvette? Alright, so Corvette is now locked in the frame, I believe. <laughs> That's because we said his gravity is so silly. Uh, let's fix that. Where are you? There we go. Let's make his gravity really nuts. Let's set his gravity to 15 so he sinks like a stone. But he, Hopefully his speed will be able to compensate for that. I'm worried if we set his gravity too high, he won't be able to make these jumps. But I think he should be okay. You know what? I'm getting sick of having this problem. I'm having a tough time hitting the play button. The reason is because of all this blank space. Uh, So we're going to fix that. Um, 
let's see. I want to figure out what color this gray is. So we're going to go to the frame itself. RGB 102, 102, 102, 128, 160. Oh, you know, or I think we can edit. No, we can't. Okay. Huh, I used to know how to do this, but I can't remember how to do it. So whatever, it's not super important. Let's just take this filter. It's going to be a black play button. And let's maybe change the background to black so that it looks a bit normal. There we go. Now when we run the frame... Uh-oh. The Corvette looks a little bit weird. Yeah, that looks hideous. Uh, let's change Corvette back. Let's pick a different background color. Red. Nothing wrong with a good old... Oh, Corvette is red. Darn you, Corvette. Uh, blue. Blue looks good. Doesn't look very spuffy anymore, but whatevs. There we go. Now let's play the game. Change the Corvette. We haven't actually added any functionality, so that doesn't mean much. And here we go. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Corvette can't actually reach anywhere because we've made his gravity too high. This game is a little bit limiting in how boring it is, so it's kind of tough to find ways to make these two player characters differ. Uh, let's see what happens if his acceleration is 1,000. Yikes. Alright, I want to make sure that Corvette can actually get up there. No, we're going to have to, we're going to have to change his gravity back to 5. Yeah, for episode three, I'm going to fix that whole uh, nonsense with the speedy. And let us, just for editing purposes, um, where is the camera that we have been adjusting? Always center the display at that, that. Hmm. And we're going to have to fix that, too. This is what I'm talking about. It gets really confusing as time goes along. New condition. Always. We're basically going to add the identical one, but this time for uh, Corvette. So go to scrollings. Center horizontal position in window. Not you. Not you either. You values position. X coordinate of Corv. And then center the vertical position of Corve. Uh, so it's not going to work right now because we are telling the camera to highlight two people at once. Uh, I don't even know what... Th this is not going to look right. I don't know what it's going to look like. I think the camera's just going to wig out. Yeah, the camera's trying to center on two people at once, and it's it's screaming for help and screaming for mercy. So what we're going to do is we are going... So we... Okay, we have two playable characters right now. Corvette is a little bit broken, but we have two playable characters. Two things the player can control. We don't want that. We just want one. So the way we're going to do that is... Um, new condition. Where's start of frame? There it is. Start of frame. So at the start of the frame, and then we're going to add a new qualifier. And it's about that global value. Remember that? Compare to a global value. If global value A is zero... Global value A equals zero means that we don't want Corvette in the game. So if global value A equals zero, then we want to uh, destroy Corv. And let's also make him invisible while we're at it so that it doesn't play the... Uh, well, it will. We just won't be able to see it. 
the death animation that we're going to add for him. And so this is if you're playing as the only guy ever. If you play as the only guy ever, delete Corv. And we need an identical one. Start a frame, insert, compare to a global value A equals one. If we're playing as Corvette, huh. No, never mind. Ignore what I was just, I was thinking of maybe taking these centers and moving them down here uh, so that if you're playing as the only guy ever, then, ooh, that's a good idea. So, this one's for the only guy ever. So, if, compared to a global value, all right, so if you're playing as the only guy ever, it'll center it on the only guy ever. If you're playing as Corvette, then it'll center on Corvette. Hooray! And now we need to make object invisible and destroy it. So this is going to destroy the player character we're not playing as. Let's see if we did it all correctly before Please TV shows up. So I'm going to play as Corvette. I lose. Oh, you know why I lost immediately? Because I destroyed the only guy ever. Uh, so we're going to have to fix that. Um, if the only guy ever is counter equals zero and compared to a global value, yeah. So global value A equals zero is shorthand for we are actually playing as this person. If we are actually playing as this person and his counter reaches zero, then we're going to move on to the next frame. Right? What do we have for jumping frames? Um, jump to frame, you lose. Oh, okay. So we're going to do that if his animation disappearing is over. Insert, compared to a global value. There. So now when his animation disappearing is over, uh, we're going to jump to the frame you lose. That shouldn't happen now because we are setting global value to 1 and playing. And there we go. We are now playing as Corvette. And look, it works. And he's a lot more difficult to control than the only guy ever. A lot more difficult. Hmm. The game is lagging because Plays TV just showed up. All right. I got it, Plays TV. Thank you. Getting sick of this. Uh, jumpy bug. What if instead of making him a platform, we make him in eight directions? So, Corvette is one of those chitty chitty bang bang cars. He can actually move in any direction. We're going to set his speed to 25. We're not going to have him moving at start. Let's see what happens if we do that. And from now on out, from here on out, we're going to have to run application. We can't run frame because the uh, the frame is, like, if we run frame, it's going to make us play as the only guy ever. We're going to have to go through this of choosing Corvette. All right. So this is how our player character is different. Corvette is a flying car. We're going to make him a not slow flying car. We're going to set him at 50. Let's play as Corvette. All right. All right, you can fit through there. Making sure the Corvette has the run of the land. His bouncing is kind of annoying. I could probably fix that. Place TV is gonna pop up. No, okay. Let's give him a lot more deceleration so that that bouncy stuff doesn't happen. Change to 95, see what happens now. Uh, run the application, Corvette, play. There, you see how we, so that way we don't have what was happening there where I'm trying to navigate. Much better. Very fine playable character. And uh, let's go to control E, because we now need to give him fun stuff, because he's not doing a lot of, op, uh, a lot of things. Um, let me just take an opportunity to show you guys how to make some workload faster. I'm going to go to qualifier, edit add, enemies. The dapper apple is an enemy. Silver wolf is also an enemy. Not a sea enemy. I'm going to add. All right, so we have two bad guys in the game. We have dapper apple and we have silver wolf. They both can classify as enemies. And if 
Corvette collides with another object, also known as group enemies. We have not given Corvette a health bar yet. So we're going to insert an object. Uh, we want it to be a counter. Let's give um, let's give him five health. Why not? Or, you know, I feel like he's more powerful than uh, uh, the only guy ever because he can fly and the only guy can't. So let's give only let's give let's give the dapper apples. Wait, not the dapper apples. Sorry. Let's give Corvette three health. You can tell I'm on spuff because I actually like I actually said something that cares about balance in this terrible game. Let's go with uh, horizontal bar, fill type gradient, and I am no. Let's change it to uh, let's change both of the colors. As uh, unfortunately, it would fit best to keep the colors as they are because of what Corvette looks like. But whatever, we're gonna go with sea foam green and uh, waifu pink. Put that up there. Control E. New condition. Where did we where did we set the value? Was it in always? Subtract one. Set position always when global value a equals zero. We have one of those. Always when global value a equals one. Set the position of counter three relative to Corvette. Right, like, yeah, there. Looks good. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, right. It's not set to uh, control M, control. Barner thing we do, we're gonna change the values of it. There we go, initial value is three. Minimum value is three. Let's see what happens now. Alright, looks good, looks a little bit big. We can fix that. We have the technology. There we go. Corvette has a health bar. And it flies with him. He doesn't actually take damage yet, but we're going to fix that right now. When when Corvette collides with enemies, then we are going to subtract one from counter. Very good. Subtract one from counter. And when the counter, compare that counter to a value, when that counter equals zero, and what we're going to add is insert global value a equals one, so that this doesn't get us murdered when we're not playing as him, then we are going to destroy Mr. Corvette, who does not have a death animation yet, but I will get to that in a second. Before we do that, I want to add that animation. Has the animation finished? Oh, okay. no, nope, we can't do this yet. I have to actually add his death animation. So let's go into that, copy the frame, go to disappearing, uh, where did that where that waifu pink go? I might as well have him explode in that color, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, ah, Z. All right, we're gonna control one. Bigger explosion. Super big explosion. I want to delete this frame. Looking good. He will explode at the speed of twenty. No loop. Let's see how that looks. Blam, blam, blam. Change that to 15, that was a little fast. Good. Oops. All right. Now that he has an exploding animation, we can change it to has an animation finished. Exploding. And let's add, compared to a global value, global value, that is the sound of my dog barking, when global value A equals one. Um, oh yes, jump to frame. So we blew up, so we are going to jump to frame. You lose. What do we have set to win? Jump to frame, you lose. 
when... Okay, those two look the same. Okay, and we don't have to fix this. We still win when the Dapper Apples dies. Um, good. Now, the Corvette does not currently have a way to fight back, if I'm not mistaken. Were we to play this game, we would just die. But we better make sure that actually happens. Let's take some damage from Silver Wolf. Ouch. Let's take some damage. Alright, you lose. And let's fix this going forward. Um... Keyboard, upon pressing a key, upon pressing space bar, we are going to have him fire, uh, we're going to have him fire memes. Uh, Corvette can't fire critical hits for the time being. Launch an object, meme, at that speed. So that's the downside to playing Corvette. Corvettes can't harm Silver Wolves. Let's run the application. You win. You lose. Oh, and there's one other thing. Corvette needs to be able to heal from medicinal warlock. New condition. Collisions with another object. When Corvette collides with medicinal warlock, we're going to add to his health counter one. So he, unlike the only guy ever, can only get... So let's lose two points of health. Lost one. Take damage from me. Does he have five health? I must have not actually hit, so bam, we get some health back. All right, so it's a little bit more difficult for the Corvette to get his health back. Uh, and there we go. And I think this is as good a time as I need to stop. Uh, hope that you learn some u useful things about Click Team Fusion as our game gets a little more complicated. If there's a spuffer that hasn't yet made the game, feel free to comment. In, uh, that hasn't qualified for a character in the game, feel free to comment in the thread. Uh, I know I want to get Major 63 and Owls into the next one, but we'll see what's going on with all of you. Hope that this information has been useful. I will put this build on the uh, Itch.io version along with downloadables for each one of these episodes going forward. So I uh, hope you all have a great day. Bye.